REST API is one of the most popular API types. REST stands for Representational State Transfer, which is also known as RESTful APIs. It is designed to take advantage of existing protocol. It can be used over any existing protocol, but it is typically used over HTTP when used on web applications. A RESTful API is an application program interface that uses HTTP requests to get, put, post, and delete data. In this video, we will use our previous knowledge of using DHT sensor, which is discussed in tutorial 11. In tutorial 16 and tutorial 17, we learn to display DHT measurements on a web page through a web server hosted on ESP32. This time, we will use the thingspeak.com IoT platform and take advantage of its REST API support. Thingspeak provides a nice and free platform for storing, analyzing, and visualizing data from Internet of Things or IoT devices just like an ESP32 device with a DHT sensor. I am here in thingspeak.com. So let's log in by clicking the this button to sign in. And input your email address. Click next. And input your password. Okay, now it gives you the list of your channels. You might need to create an account initially on Matworks by going on matworks.com slash mwaccount slash register. And later on, you can use it for signing in on thingspeak.com. You can create your account here and input the necessary details after you are signed in you can create a new channel by clicking the new channel button okay i cannot create another one because i am using a pre license so we are only going to use this channel click this one to open Okay, in the field one chart is the graph or chart of my temperature, while field two chart is a graph of humidity. After creating a channel, you need to go to API keys tab here, API keys, and there are two kinds of API. One is write API key and another one is read API keys. Write API key is used on storing data while read API key is used when you are accessing a data. In write, you will upload or send a data to thingspeak.com while read API key is used when you are asking or requesting a data from thingspeak.com. In our case, we will use write API key when sending data for writing on thingspeak.com. I cannot demonstrate this one, but when creating a new channel, you need to make sure to enable two fields, one for temperature and another for humidity. Fill out the fields accordingly for easy references. So for the hardware part, I have here an ESP32 development board with a DHT sensor attached. It is a DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor. DHT22 is powered through the ESP32 3.3 volt spin and ground pin, 
while the data pin is connected on ESP32 pin 23. For the software part, I have here prepared a source code for this tutorial. It begins with the imports of libraries to be used, which are this one. Machine library is used for accessing the hardware. Network library is used for configuring the Wi-Fi to connect to a Wi-Fi router for the internet connection. Wi-Fi credentials is a file saved in MicroPython device root directory. It contains the SSID and password of a Wi-Fi router we want to connect to. Don't worry, I will upload a copy of Wi-Fi credentials.py for your reference. You request library is used to simplify the use of REST API. DHT library is used for the DHT sensor. And lastly, the time module is used for creating update interval. Next is the creation of pin object named LED, which is the onboard LED. Another object created is a DHT22 object named D, which is connected, of course, to D23 or digital pin 23. Next, we connect the ESP32 to a Wi-Fi router to be able to connect to internet. Next is the constants and variables. HTTP headers tells the content type of data that we are going to send. In this case, a JSON formatted data. Another constant created is things speak write API key, which is this one. I will replace this one from here, which is this one, which I think is same yeah so this thing speak right api key will come from our channels under api keys tab and under the right api key which is this one just copy this one and paste it here Another constant is the update time interval constant, which is set to 5000 in milliseconds unit. And lastly, the last update variable, which will hold the last time an update was sent to ThingSpeak server. Then, here is our main loop, which contains getting of DHT measurement and saving the temperature to T variable and the humidity to H variable. Then we created a DHT reading is a variable containing the JSON formatted temperature and humidity readings of DHT sensor. The DHT readings is sent using the post method of your request library using the right API key as authentication, DHT readings as a data payload, and the HTTP headers. Then the request is terminated using the close function of the U request library. I added here a debug message through the REPL print. And the onboard LED is also used to indicate that the system is functioning. The LED should toggle its state every time the update is sent to the ThingSpeak server. And lastly, the update interval is achieved by recording the time of last update and by subtracting it from the current time and then compare its difference to the update time interval constants. If the difference between the current time and the last update time is more than or equal to the set update time interval, then it is now a time to send an update to the server. I added here some comments which says, initially, there would be some delays before submitting the first update, but should be enough to stabilize the DHT sensor. This is because that the if statement for the update interval will only be executed 
after the set update time interval, which is in this case is 5,000 milliseconds, this one, or 5 seconds is reads. In exchange of the delays here, is letting the DHT sensor to stabilize first before taking its first measurement, which is good for our application. Now let's see this in action. Let me click the run button. So it will connect first to my Wi-Fi router. Then it will send its first update. So let's open the thingspeak.com and let's see the current data. So these are the current data. And you may also observe that the LED changes its state every time it send an update to the ThingSpeak server. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. Be sure to give me thumbs up by clicking the like button and do share this to your friends so that it can reach more people who might benefit from this. And if you are not yet subscribed, subscribe now and hit the notification bell so that you will be notified when a new video like this is uploaded. You might also like to visit my blog post at techtotinker.blogspot.com for more details such as circuit diagram and source code. Thank you! And have good days ahead. I hope to see you next time. Bye.